It's a sticky but overcast tropical morning. I wanted to get down today, it's a Saturday, and I thought, hey, I got my stuff done for the week. I wanna get that pumpkin patch going, now that I've weeded it down mostly. And so, I should go down and burn some stuff and get some ashes to put out for the pumpkins and then clear the rest of the weeds and all that jazz. And then this morning, as I was getting ready, it started pouring, tropical monsoon pouring. So now everything is soaked. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to light a fire, but I'm gonna try anyhow and see if I can get some ashes for these uh, pumpkin hills, because they really like that in this somewhat acidic clay. So we shall see. Stick around. After about a half an hour, I finally got a fire lit. Everything is just way too wet, but I'm determined to uh, plant some pumpkins today. I just can't stand it. I've been wanting to get them in. I'm sitting here drinking some of my homemade Gatorade. This is about a teaspoon of sea salt, maybe a tablespoon of honey, juice of a lemon or a couple of limes, and then I fill it up with water and ice, stir it around real good. Got the electrolytes, a little bit of salt. I could probably drink seawater at this point and still sweat it all out. But that fire, I tried my little Boy Scout method that I learned from my dad where you make a little, basically a log cabin out of tiny little pieces and you stack it up and then you light one match and it burns. Nah, I had a lighter going continuously until the end of it was really hot. And did not work. So I had to use an old permaculture trick called half a cup of gasoline. <laughs> Yep, I cheated. Hope it all burns off or else my pumpkins are gonna be filled with fossil fuels. Crack a pumpkin open, pour it into the car. Oh well, I just really wanted that fire started. I'll show it to you. My fire is going. It's struggling. I've been turning it over. I just raked the fuel back in the middle of it, but there's a, uh, enough coals in there. Once that burns down real well, I'll spread it out and that'll be the spot where I plant the pumpkins. But it's getting hot out here. So I'm gonna do that later. I changed my mind. I'm gonna weed eat a little bit and then I'm gonna go up the hill. So that there should give me a little bit of space. I tore it all up and uh, when this thing burns out, I'll come out and sprinkle these ashes around and make myself a nice little mound to plant pumpkins on. We'll do that in a bit. For now, I think I'm done. It's the evening, it's cooled off a bit. I'm gonna go back down the hill, actually get those pumpkins going. One thing you may have seen is that pumpkins grow best in a compost pile. So, I'm gonna take a lot of this rough, sloppy compost, throw it into this bucket, and bring it down the hill with me so I have it. Unfortunately, my fork is down the hill. I have to use my machete. Bet it loves that. Just another experiment. We'll see how it goes. The fire has pretty much burned itself out, but it's still hot, so I'm gonna actually put it out with some of my compost tea water, which has seawater and all kinds of stuff like manure and urine and seaweed and compost and all kinds of things. This is still nice and hot. But I don't want it this hot. So I'll just put it out and add some fertility at the same time.
As you can probably see, we've got some biochar in here too now. Just a fancy name for charcoal. Looking good. This is where I'm gonna plant. Growing this rough compost. Alright, I like that. Let's plant. These seeds that I have here are from a local farmer who's a friend of mine. And he told me that he's been picking the best pumpkins he can find and mixing them together on his homestead to get really good pumpkins. So we'll plant these in here. And we'll see how they turn out. Ought to be some good genetic variation. He says he's put all different kinds. He goes to the market, he picks up pumpkins. So, there we go. If this gets to be too much, we'll thin them out later. Now let's put on one more washing of my crazy compost tea. And I'll probably chase this with a couple of gallons of water from the creek because this may be a little bit strong. Now this is all highly experimental, but I've seen the way things grow after you have a fire, and I've seen the way pumpkins grow out of my compost piles, often way out producing the pumpkins I plant conventionally. So I thought, why not combine the two methods and we'll just see what happens. Now I'm not necessarily encouraging everybody to go out, burn a fire, throw a bunch of rough compost, seawater, anaerobic compost, whatever, and grow your pumpkins. I don't exactly know how this is gonna work. So we're gonna find out together, and I'm gonna film the progress, and we'll see how it turns out. And that's a lot of fun. You'll notice from my videos that a lot of my gardening is experimentation. And the reason I do that is because I write books. So I'm constantly failing at new things until I figure out all the stuff that doesn't work. And then when I figure out what really works well, that's what I share. And having just moved to a brand new climate, I am doing things all over again. I'm trying to learn every bit of gardening again in totally different ways. I'm learning from the natives, I'm experimenting, trying to figure out how this whole monsoon season, dry season thing works. And I'm gardening in clay after the last, you know, decade or so of gardening in sand. So, here we go. Anyhow, thank you for watching. I'll keep you posted on the pumpkins. Be sure to like, subscribe, catch me on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com. And until next time, keep growing. But I'll bet you this grows some good pumpkins. You're too loud. I'm on video. What are you doing? Come here. Poor Amal, don't eat the compost. Oh, you're gonna steal a mango pit. All right, you chewing that.